Having the ability to modify text is a great help to any web designer. Having plain text is fine, and we use it a lot of times, but often we need to add some sort of emphasis. And there's two very common ways that we can add emphasis to our HTML text. I'm going to show you these two most common ways real quickly, and then a couple of less common things. So, for example, we have here our text with lorem ipsum, and let's say I want to make it bold. Well, bold is actually a design, and so that's going to be in CSS, but we have a tag that we often use to show bold, and that's going to be our strong tag. Now, you'll notice that my particular editor went ahead and created a closing strong tag. So I'm just going to come over here and move that to right after my ipsum. And I'm going to save it. Now, if I come here back to my web browser, reload it, you'll notice that lorem ipsum is now bold and the rest of the text is just kind of small and kind of insignificant. So that helps create some emphasis on it by making it bold and strong is usually shown as bold. We can actually change that in CSS, but typically you don't. The other is to actually have an emphasis tag and the emphasis tag, once again, is designed to apply emphasis. But in this case, we typically show it as being italicized. Let me come back here and on my tag, I'm going to just going to put EM for emphasis. Once again, I have to move my closing tag just because the way my editor made it. And if I save, come back to my HTML page and reload, you can now see the italicized. And these are two very common things that we're going to do. Now let's show you some less common ones, but things that are still used periodically. One of them is going to be the delete. And this is used to show what happens if we had text that is no longer relevant. And for example, I might have a web page for an online catalog and I want to show there's an old price and we mark it out and then we have a new price. So I'll just use DEL, that's short for delete. And I'll list it here. When I reload it, you'll notice it automatically puts a strike through it or a line through it. So this is meant to show something that is no longer relevant, but we need to show it was still there. It's crossed out. So we could do it, for example, if we had a to-do list and we want to cross things out that are no longer being shown. We can use it to show items that are not relevant anymore, like a price has been reduced. Uh, there's a wide variety of things that we can use this for. Now, often, a lot of times, if we move something to delete it, we'll also need to insert something. And there is an INS tag for insert. I'm just going to move that in there like that, save that file. And when we reload it, you'll notice that now that text has an underline. It's to highlight the fact that it's new. So a lot of people don't use this if they're adding text because the underline is kind of an unknown type category. It just depends upon how you want to use it. You can, once again, change this with CSS styles if you want to. The idea is we're telling people that this was a newly inserted comment compared to our previous comments and information that we had before. Another tag that we run into periodically is the abbreviation tag. And it's simply a B B R and this has a required attribute. The required attribute is title. And the reason for it is that we need to define what is this value. So abbreviation is where we often run into an abbreviation and people may have seen what it was before, but may not remember because it was a while up. And so as a good habit, anytime we have an abbreviation, a web page, we can use this ABBR tag. And then in the title, put what does that abbreviation stand for? 
I'm going to save this. And when we go back to our web page, we reload it. And over here on the side, you'll notice we have EX. And if I put my mouse cursor over it, you'll notice that it automatically creates a little pop-up window saying sample required attribute, what we had inside the title. Now, this is going to always do this little pop-up window for us. We don't have to do any programming to do this. We don't have to know any JavaScript or anything like that. It's automatically built for us. And so it's a really nice feature, especially if you're not a programmer, that you can go and provide information that's not readily available to the average person. Another couple examples just to show you quickly is there is a SUP. We're going to move the closing tag after that. Now, this is actually more normally seen, for example, with numbers. And that's because SUP stands for superscript. So if you think you have like a two and then you have a superscript of four showing an exponent. Likewise, you also have an SUB for subscript. And the subscript is once again often more used in things like your sciences, like chemistry, where you have a chemical compound, H, and then a two that's a subscript that shows that there's two hydrogen and an O for an oxygen or water, if you would prefer. So we can put this with words. We can put this with anything we want, though. We have a lot of flexibility. If I reload my page here, you notice here this word is now superscript. It's showing up above. And then right after it, we have a subscript word. So we have a lot of flexibility. And just because we typically use it for things like chemistry or math doesn't mean that we have to. But if we need it and we have that ability, and when we work with special situations like chemistry and math and other sciences, it's often very helpful to have that. So these are some pretty simple and common ways to modify text inside of our paragraph tag. All these tags that we've looked at today are inline tags, which you notice they only affect the words or content that they immediately surround.